Hello everyone, I'm Marina Bajedaeva, a research associate actively involved in a community project led by Forum Association. In 2019, we already presented our software, an open source variant curation and interpretation tool designed for analysis of the data produced from genomic sequencing. We named it ANFISA. The community surrounding forum projects comprises diverse professionals, including software developers, clinicians and researchers. We emphasize that experts from all backgrounds can contribute to the development of ANFISA, irrespective of their coding skills. We have achieved this through the use of domain-specific language, DSL for short, that is universally understood by all community members. Integrating genome sequencing into clinical practice poses challenges due to the lack of a unified classification system. This hinders the collection and normalization of data from diverse research studies and clinical cases, resulting in lower quality evidence. However, based on our experience, we have seen how utilizing a DSL improves traceability and reproducibility in variant interpretation analysis. By leveraging DSL, we can tackle the absence of a unified classification system, increasing the chances of insurance coverage and facilitating the integration of genomic sequencing into routine clinical practice. And that's why I'm here today and I'm thrilled to demonstrate some of the features of of our DSL. In ANFISA, we employ a decision tree logic to filter genetic variants that contribute to specific phenotypes observed in patients or even cohorts of patients. These rules are typically come from guidelines published by various scientific organizations and expressed in the form of free text. Let's consider the following rules. If a variant is classified as pathogenic in database 1, which means it's labeled by specific tags, or if the variant is extremely rare, means that allele frequency is very low, and so on, then it should be included in the analysis. Otherwise, it should be excluded as it's likely benign. What we do? We rewrite these rules as a sequence of inclusion and exclusion criteria, by rewriting the rules, we enhance the explainability of our analysis and prepare the logic to visualize each step of the curation process. Look at our decision tree visualization. It is so easy now to capture how variants are selected or excluded throughout the analysis pipeline. The visualization empowers users to delve deeper down to the level of individual variants. They can explore the specific annotations associated with each variant and understand the rationale behind its inclusion or exclusion. I will show you how you can do it during the poster session. The sequence of inclusion-exclusion criteria is easy to convert into a dialect of Python that we use for writing curation rules scripts. The scripts are accessible for the user via text editor embedded in UI and providing an IDE-like features, allowing syntax highlighting and error checking. The scripts can be edited directly, saved and applied to the dataset. Our DSL uses genetic annotations as its variables. Now I'm showing you a classification system that we implement to help a curator to ensure the quality of evidence when searching for candidate variant. The strength of evidence heavily relies on the resolution level of each annotation, the knowledge domain it belongs to, and the method used for generating the annotation. The resolution ranges from specific transcript and variant details to broader functional units. An example of knowledge domain can be human or animal genetics. The methods employed include statistical genetics inference, bioinformatics predictions, as well as in vivo or in vitro experiments. We propose initiating a discussion on the semantic and syntactic aspects of the DSL for variant curation and interpretation along with determining the most effective and intuitive way to structure an annotation types. We firmly believe that developing a standard or at least a guideline for representing variant curation rules will assist in establishing a unified and systematic approach to reporting clinically relevant variants. 
Ultimately, this will bring us closer to evidence-based medicine. Thank you.